Yeah, in, in the financial services industry, we are more and more regulated. I mean, there's literally uh, every month something new coming out. Um, some say it's, it's over-regulated, and, and in particular in the, in the focus on compliance-related subjects. Do you see this increasingly strict regulation that comes out on a regular basis really making it impossible or even more difficult for criminals or money launderers to, to follow their business? Or is it just uh, to some extent making life more difficult for the good guys who are trying to comply with? I think over-regulation is a concern. I think it's important. Um, I, I, think, I think there are certain regulations that may on the surface appear to be uh, superficial or useless or, or not as effective as they were intended to be, when in reality they're actually quite effective. But I also think there are many regulations which have no effect at all and, and really don't deter or stop crime from occurring. If I may use another analogy, in the United States we have reporting requirements for cash transactions. And the limit has been set from the very beginning at $10,000. And many financial institutions have argued that the limit is too low, that we're filing these currency transaction reports, but they have no value. And what really happens on behind the scenes is, as far as criminal activity, why that $10,000 threshold is important is it sort of it flushes the bad guy out of the darkness and into the light. Mm. It creates a problem for the criminal because it's such a low threshold, that forces them to do other things that are easier for law enforcement to find and then focus on. Um, very much like a hunter who sends his dog into the, into the bushes to, to have the quail fly out. It's the same thing with the reporting requirement. It's, it is a low threshold, and they do file many reports. And we have suspicious activity reports which also capture some of that activity. But the fact that the requirement is there forces the criminals to change their conduct and that change of conduct is what law enforcement then capitalizes on and takes advantage of to, to, to stop and arrest and prevent these crimes. So I think from that perspective regulation is working even though it may appear on the surface that it's, um, it's a little bit too much. But I have seen regulation within financial institutions especially among regulators where um, it's treated differently. One regulator looks at a transaction one way, another regulator looks at mm -hmm. the same transaction a different way, and financial institutions are caught in the middle. Um, I understand the position. They're, financial institutions are in very difficult positions in many cases. They've got many masters that they have to answer to, right? Um, not only do they need to protect their assets and their company and their reputation, but they need to check all the boxes and satisfy the regulators that they're doing things properly in, in the right way. But I have seen, especially in the U.S., which obviously I'm more familiar with, a, a trend to try and regulate every aspect. And I just don't think the cost bears out fruit at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't stop what's going to occur. Uh, any more than when the regulation wasn't there. Yeah, okay. Just don't think it works. Yeah, no, indeed. I guess a lot of people watching this blog will resonate with that uh, statement, yeah. indeed. Look, I, I think a, t a totally unregulated business model is, is not acceptable either, but it ha you have to find a happy medium. You have to find a, mm. an equilibrium there. Okay. Now to, to close with, uh, you cannot avoid technology these days, talking about the subject. Um, what, what is the impact of technology in v your view on that? I mean, we have all those fintechs coming up with uh, brilliant solutions and customer experiences with not necessarily are regulated as closely as the more traditional banking sector. You have uh, new means like Bitcoin. Uh, or other type of uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. Is, how is that changing the, the concept of financial crime in your view? Well, I think it's revolutionized it in many different ways. But at the end of the day, it comes down to a human being. Mm. The front line of every financial institution is the human being. For example, I do a lot with uh, suspicious activity reporting and transaction monitoring. And there's a big push, a big uh, budgetary um, focus, putting money toward artificial intelligence to help um, detect transactions that may present a problem. But at the end of the day, if those 
accounts and those transactions were prevented from ever entering the system, you wouldn't need the artificial intelligence to find them once they're a needle mm -hmm. in the haystack. I think any financial institution, its primary focus has to be its human capital, has to be, because any system, you could create the best computer system, but if a employee opens up a email attachment that they're not supposed to open, and now you have viruses mm -hmm. and, and different computer-related issues going through your computer, um, it's that human being that caused the problem, not the program, not the computer program. As far as productivity, um, the digital age is here. It has revolutionized, revolutionized uh, every aspect of banking and, and financial dealing. Cryptocurrencies, I think, present great hope, but also present great problems, great risk that I don't think people are focusing on enough. I think everybody has this fear of missing out on the cryptocurrency rage without understanding what it is that they're actually getting involved with and what the risks are that are associated with it. Um, I think it's not going away. I think mm -hmm. it is a definitely a, a, a facet of the financial industry that's here to stay. Uh, cryptocurrencies, I think, will be a big focus of every financial institution from two perspectives. One from a risk perspective, but also from a business perspective, getting involved with it, uh, finding ways to make money from it when it becomes legitimate and legitimized mm. and, and when the systems and the protections are there in place. I think you'll see big institutions then start getting involved. Yeah. Until then, I think it pays. I think they're very smart to approach it from a very cautious perspective. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that indeed. And uh, thank you very much for those very uh, valuable insights. Uh, thank you for coming to Luxembourg. And uh, for uh, the other people that are interested in further details about uh, statistics and uh, the outcomes of the economic crime survey, please download this report from our website and uh, you can have further details in all those aspects that we discussed today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Michael. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you.